Well, good morning, SCF kids. You ready for another episode? How was your week? Like I said before, we don't have a lot of stories of Jesus as a child, so last week was the last time we were talking about him before he was all grown up. Today, we're actually jumping ahead 20 years. If you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about a man by the name of John. And what was John supposed to do? He was to prepare the way for Jesus to come. And guess what happened? That's exactly what he did. So Jesus' ministry was officially about to start. So let's jump in and see what happened next. Isadora the crazy scientist here, all the way from Big Rock Candy Mountain. I mean, it's not every day someone travels 1,462 kilometers for 14 hours and 35 minutes. But you guys, you're worth it. Today, I have an experiment that is going to blow your mind. I heard Jenna was going to be talking today about baptism, and I have a doozy of an experiment about that. So, let's get started. I have a balloon here today, and inside my balloon is nothing. It's empty, and it's kind of like our life before we have Jesus in it. If, if we don't know about Jesus, or we don't believe in Jesus, our life is empty. It's like this balloon. But... Let me not forget the funnel. Ah, uh, silly me. When we learn about Jesus and we accept Jesus' sacrifice for us, we no longer have to be empty on the inside. He fills us up and he changes us from the inside out. It's actually really quite neat. How, how much of this should I put in here? Should I keep going? Yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Yeah, look, maybe, maybe just one more. Yep. Ah, uh, I think that's good. Okay. So, oh, it actually wasn't going in. Boop, there we go. So no longer are we empty. We have Jesus living inside of us. He's changed us from the inside out. And so, when we learn about Jesus and we become more like him as we learn and we grow, yeah, something happens. Whoa! Boom! Just like that. There's an outward change after Jesus comes into our life, or there should be. We should live differently after we know Jesus. And one of the things that you do to show other people that you've been changed from the inside out is you get baptized. So when you get baptized, that's when you go under the water and you come back up again, which represents when Jesus died. And what happened on the third day? Yeah, he rose up from the dead. And so when you come back up out of the water, that's a symbol of Jesus being resurrected from the dead. And it tells the whole world that you love Jesus and that you want to follow him because inside your heart, inside this balloon, God did something amazing. And now, once we allow Jesus into our heart, he changes us and other people can see it. Pretty fantastic. But before I go on my 1,462 kilometer drive, all the way back to Big Rock Candy Mountain, I want to leave you with this. It's an interesting one. Did you know that Jesus himself was actually baptized too? Huh. I think there's a Bible story about that. So I'm going to leave that with you. And I'm going to head back into my car. And I'm going to drive another 14 hours and 35 minutes back home. But this was so worth it. You guys are the best. Hope you have a great day.
John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. His clothes were made out of camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. John began telling people, repent and be baptized because God's kingdom is almost here. Some people asked John, who are you? John said, I am not the Messiah. John also said he wasn't Elijah and he wasn't the prophet that God had promised to send after Moses. Who are you then? They asked. Long before John was born, the prophet Isaiah said, someone is shouting in the wilderness. He says, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Isaiah was talking about John. John had a very important job. He was supposed to get people ready for Jesus, God's promised Messiah. People started to repent. They turned away from their sins and turned to God for forgiveness. Then John baptized them in the Jordan River. Baptism was a picture that the people's sins had been washed away. John preached, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. By this time, Jesus was an adult. He went to see John the Baptist at the Jordan River. When John saw Jesus, he said, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus told John that he wanted to be baptized, but John didn't think he should baptize Jesus. I need you to baptize me, John said. Why do you want me to baptize you? John was confused. He baptized people who confessed their sins. Jesus never sinned. Jesus said, allow me to be baptized. God says this is right. So John agreed and he baptized Jesus. Jesus immediately came up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens opened and Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down on him like a dove. God's voice came from heaven. This is my son, the voice said. I love him and I am very pleased with him. Jesus never sinned but he obeyed God and was baptized like sinners are baptized. Baptism reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. It reminds us that when we trust in Jesus, we turn from sin and start a new life, a life lived for Jesus. So while John was baptizing people, Jesus also came to the river. He told John that he wanted to be baptized. John was confused. He'd been baptizing people who had confessed their sins, but Jesus had never sinned. Jesus recorded this in Matthew 3, 15. He said to John, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. Jesus was saying that it's the right thing to do. And so John baptized Jesus. I mean, Jesus wasn't baptized as a sign of repentance or turning away from his sin because he'd never sinned but he was doing it as a way of fully obeying God the Father. So remember this, Jesus obeyed God by being baptized. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Jack from Clinton, Mississippi asks, Why do we get baptized if we've already trusted in Jesus? Jack, I love your question because within it is a really important truth that baptism does not save us. And I appreciate that you recognize that. You know, when we come to saving faith in Jesus, it's a matter of us just placing our faith in him, trusting in who Jesus is and what he did. That alone saves us. It's a, it's a work of God in our hearts, in our lives. Baptism does not save. However, we also know that baptism is important. We're commanded to be baptized. So one of the reasons why we're baptized is, is that alone, that we wanna be obedient. And it's one of our first acts of obedience that we demonstrate that we believe in Jesus, we want to follow him and we'll do what he calls us to do. So that's why it's really important that we be baptized. But there are a couple other reasons. Uh, one is that we're baptized because we are making a picture before others about what Jesus has done for us. So when you're baptized, uh, many churches will do it at the front of the church and there's, there's that room full of people. You are making a word picture to everybody watching how Jesus has saved you from your sin. And so you are being used to tell others the gospel through your baptism. 
But the other reason is this, because when we're baptized, we're basically identifying with Jesus and the church. We're saying, I'm taking a stand. I believe in Jesus. I'm following him. I'm with him and I'm part of this church. And that's really important. It's important for us and it's important for others to see. You know, God designed it so that your baptism is something you can look back on in the times where you might start to, to wonder, did, did you really believe in Jesus? Did you really trust him? Um, are you really saved? And what God has done is he's given us the baptism as a way that we can look back and say, oh, that's evidence because I took a stand for Jesus in public and, and I took a stand with the church and said, yeah, this is true of me. And so baptism is a great gift to us as well in that regard. So a couple questions back for you. Have you been baptized or seen someone else be baptized? And what questions do you have about baptism? All right, kids, it's memory verse time. So today we've got a new verse that we're gonna start with, and I hope that you can get this one fairly easy. It's quite short compared to last month's verse, which was a little bit longer and kind of a bit confusing with all the tongue twisting of the same words. But I've got a beach ball today because I thought it was kind of cold outside and let's remember a little bit of summer weather today. So we're gonna play some music. I'm gonna hit the ball up in the air when the music stops. Whatever my right thumb is closest to on here is how we are going to say the verse, okay? So feel free to dance, jump around, uh, get some wiggles out while the music is playing, and then we're gonna read our verse together. All right, here we go in three, two, one. Do a little dance, here we go. You're doing a fine job. You try not to lose the ball. Oh, all right. It says spin around. You could go slow, you could go fast, however you feel, but let's read our verse together while you spin. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3, 30. What do you think that verse even means? Who's he and why are they increasing and why are we decreasing? A bit confusing, right? It's talking about Jesus and how he must increase. We must put him first importance and we, we take second place, right? We put God first in our lives, okay? So, short verse, John 3, 30. Let's play the music again. Whoa, just about lost it. Let me show you, show me your best dance move. Woo! I feel like I'm gonna lose it here. Oh, it says, close your eyes. So close those eyes. Let's read the verse together. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3, 30. You guys are so good at this. You got another one in there? Okay, this time I want you to jog on the spot while I'm hitting the ball, okay? Here we go, in three, two, one. Jog faster! Pretend like there's a bear chasing you and you're trying to get out of the bush. Run faster! Woo! All right, clap. So get your clapping hands ready on the count of three. One, two, three. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3, 30. That's pretty good. I kind of wish the verse was a little bit longer because that was fun. Let's do one more round. This time, I want you to do jumping jacks while I hit the ball, okay? Here we go. Tell me how many jumps 
jumping jacks you do while I'm doing this. Fine job. Woo! Ooh, it says do the worm. <laughs> I don't think I can do the worm. And well, the camera's not really at the right angle. So I'm gonna leave the worm up to you. But let's do the verse one last time while you do the worm. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3:30. Those were some great worms, okay? Uh, so now I want you to take a little breather, grab your Bible, find a comfy spot, and we're gonna read together. Okay, Bible's up. Let's read Psalm 99, verses 2 to 3. It says, The Lord is mighty in Zion. He is supreme over all the nations. Everyone will praise his great and majestic name. Holy is he. When we trust in Jesus, we turn from our sin and we start a new life. A life lived for Jesus. He is great, and he's exalted above all. So I want you to stand up, and we're going to praise his holy name together. Come on, clap your hands. Here we go. That's it. Having 
Well, it's time to wrap up things for today. Did you grab your string or your tape? And you got your two fingers? I hope so. All right, I want you to lay out your string or your tape just in front of you on the table, the floor, whatever. Um, this is not gonna lay straight, but I'm gonna either call out in the river, out of the river, or on the river. So if I say in the river, you gotta be on the one side with two fingers, out of the river on the other side, and on the river one finger on either side. Got it? All right, here we go. In the river, out of the river, in the river, in the river, out of the river, oh, in the river, on the river. Oh, did I get you? Okay, let's try that again. On the river. You didn't move, did you? In the river, out of the river, on the river. Oh, that's not on the river, that's on the river, in the river, out of the river, on the river. You get the idea, right? So John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, including baptizing Jesus. But remember, Jesus never sinned. Instead, he obeyed God and was baptized like sinners are baptized. Baptism reminds us of Jesus' death and his resurrection. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And after three days, God raised him from the dead. So baptism reminds us of Jesus and what he did to save his people from their sin. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to save us. Thank you that he perfectly obeyed you in all things, from baptism even to death on the cross. Help us obey you through our love for you. Amen.